Oh, the depths of the wisdom and the knowledge of our God. His paths are beyond our tracing. But what a blessing for you and me, brothers and sisters in Christ, that that grace and that mercy and that love of God becomes ours through the power of his word. May we embrace the words of the Apostle Paul in our first lesson, that we might know him better, to see those miracles, to see that power of our God for comfort and strength, uh, for ex expectations and eagerness, waiting to see that glorious uh, day when we will be with him in his heavenly kingdom. God, richest blessings. Today, we're going to focus on the gospel lesson uh, as we see that first miracle of Jesus, how he demonstrated that power, and as he strengthens our faith in his power in our life. Let us begin with a prayer. O Lord, bless us today by the power of your word, that you would comfort our hearts with forgiveness, and that you would encourage us uh, with your power, as each and every day you will provide for us, you will protect us, and one day you will take us home to heaven. Bless us by your word, for your word is the truth. Amen. If you had bought 146 million tickets prior to Wednesday's drawing, you would have had a 50-50 chance to at least win some of that $1.6 billion uh, Powerball. 50-50 chance, flipping a coin. So, over 635 billion people bought tickets with the hopes and dreams of being one of those lucky few. The problem was, uh, the chances are that one in 292 million tickets would have been the ticket to getting rich quick, right? to, to be rolling in the dough. I think you would, safe, it's, uh, would agree with me, it's safe to say those are some pretty tough odds to uh, base your hopes and dreams on in regards to the future. You actually, as an average American citizen, have a better chance of becoming the President of the United States of America. There are better odds for an, an amateur athlete to make it big in the professional world of sports you have a better chance of finding a four-leaf clover than having won the Powerball this past Wednesday. Actually, even the, the lottery last night of only about $40 million. With such tough odds, though, you still kind of wonder why so many people put their hopes and dreams that they might be the one who wins the Powerball, right? All that hard-earned money, all that time they spent bringing home uh, that cash, uh, to me, uh, statistically, uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Well, then again, people might say the same thing about you and me. All the time and energy and money that we put into a church. It's absurd, it's foolish for you and me to think that we can put all of our eggs in that one basket called Christianity and everything is going to be fine, at least that's how the world thinks about it. But then again, you and I have our own moments, don't we? Right? We ourselves sometimes wonder, or we question, or even we doubt all the promises that we learn about in God's word. All you have to do is just read the Bible, and all your problems will sort of just go away. Many people who play the lottery are hoping, they maybe even think, that if they win all this money, all their problems will be gone. The struggles will sort of just sort of fade away. They'll be able to enjoy that comfortable lifestyle. In fact, they even get to help other people because they have all these extra means. There's sort of this idea that if you win the lottery, most of your worries at least will sort of just kind of fade away and life will be much better. But you and I can relate that, though, too, can't we? We can relate to the natural desire or the, the need to be able to just sort of catch our breath for a moment, uh, to sort of just be able to sit and relax just for a moment if we can. Because life throws us so many punches at us, and, and life can be so difficult. To, release, to relieve ourselves of any tension, that's always a good thing. We're, we're always constantly trying to look for and search for a better way 
to deal with our problems and our struggles. Well, Mary's solution was rather simple and easy. Just tell Jesus. Right? Jesus, there's no more wine. You notice how she doesn't sort of bark out orders at him, giving him just a couple of limited options as to how he could fix the problem. And she doesn't go on and on about how this is just such a tragic thing that they ran out of wine. The fact, though, that she brought this request to him, though, does tell us that, yeah, it would have been a shame if the celebration had to end prematurely. No one wants to remember their wedding day as the day when there wasn't enough cake to eat. Or we couldn't afford the hall for the whole evening to celebrate you want to walk away from a wedding celebration with, with wonderful stories and, and, and fun times. But Mary understood that life would go on. It wasn't the end of the world if they didn't have any more wine. She realized that most importantly for this couple, that God needs to be part of their relationship. And yet, she still brings this request. She turns to Jesus for help. But that's something that she had learned ever since she had become the mother of the Savior of the world. Day by day, she continued to ponder who Jesus is and, and what she had learned about him. Day after day, she marveled at this job that God had given to her to be the, sa the mother of the Savior of the world. And over the course of those years, she was given this, this confidence that her, uh, the odds were in her favor that Jesus would help her, right? Nothing was too insignificant, she knew. She knew nothing was impossible for Jesus to do. She recognized, as she had come to know her Lord and Savior on, on a bigger scale, that, that even though in the beginning it was hard for her to comprehend what was going on, those years of training had taken a wonderful toll on her. Who else would she turn to than her son for help? The question for us this morning, then, is to ask ourselves, do our hearts sort of sink with Mary? Do we think the same way that she did when we face our own problems? Do we tend to ask a lot of Jesus, just like Mary did? After all, wasn't that what she was taught to do? Wasn't she taught by the Gabriel, angel Gabriel that her son was actually the son of God? Didn't she know that Jesus was supposed to do great things? And as this problem arose at this wedding, she thought to herself, well, this is a great opportunity for Jesus to finally tell people and show people who he is and what he can do for them certain of what Jesus could do and certain that his heart was filled with compassion, she turned to the servants and she said, do whatever he tells you. Now, I don't know exactly what has been on your personal prayer list lately, but I know with some of my conversations with some of you that you know, in this new year, there are some big ticket items on your lists of things to do. There are some things that you are expecting to happen. And I'm sure there are some things that you are at least a little concerned about that's going to come up in this new year. Every week as a church family, we focus on certain things as we utilize the prayer corner in the bulletin to talk about and to share what's on our minds and what we're concerned about and what we're praying for. From week, one week to the next, uh, we, we constantly face new problems and new issues while the old ones sometimes sort of linger with us. And, and each of us, uh, we have that fear of looking into God's mirror and finding that sinful mugshot. Like Mary, then, are you asking a lot of Jesus? Or are you like me sometimes in my prayer life, just a little bit unsure of where things are going? Maybe a little, little hesitant 
as you think about what you're going to ask for in your prayers. Maybe a little doubtful. Maybe even demanding of God, impatient with him. In your prayer life, do you have sort of these expectations of God? And, 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 and if he's not going to meet them, then perhaps a little upset. Or maybe you have the timer, right? You, you, you click the timer to two days and uh, God better answer this rather quickly or else. How do you respond when God's answers don't meet your expectations? Jesus responded to Mary's requests with what seems to be sort of an odd comment. It it sort of borders on being sort of critical of Mary and and might even come off a little bit unloving as Jesus addressed her request. But much was learned. Dear woman, why do you involve me? Mom, you and I have two different goals here when we're looking at what's going on. I understand why you're coming to me because you know who I really am. But you need to remember, I need to and I want to follow my father's timetable. Mary, it's very important that you and I follow his plan for our life. And with those few words, Mary learned a very valuable lesson. A lesson that the Apostle Paul actually taught us in our first lesson for this morning. There was a reason why the Apostle Paul encouraged the Ephesians to get to know Jesus better. There was something that was going to come from personal study and meditation, learning, about, learning more about this, this man named Jesus. You see, the more that we learn from Jesus and about Jesus, the more that we witness the miracles recorded in scriptures, the, the more that we ponder, like Mary did, the promises that Jesus gives to us, the bigger our prayers. The more confidence that we have in our prayers, the more we understand what Jesus meant when he said to Mary, my time has not yet come. Right? The, no, the more that we get to know Jesus, we recognize that in due time, God will answer our prayers according to his plan. And in fact, he's going to answer those prayers in a way that's best for us. The more that we get to know Jesus, the more bold we will be in our prayers, sort of shooting for the moon in what we might ask for God, but we do that with humbleness. But we also do it with trust. Right? The more that we get to know Jesus, the more we trust his heart, that he wants to do for us what's best. The more we trust his muscles to recognize what he is able to do for us, and and the more we trust in his brains, that he knows exactly how to answer our prayers so that they're a blessing to us. The wedding at Cana, those, those six big jars, 120 gallons worth of wine, they're just one of many miracles in God's word that teach us that Jesus is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. So, are you asking a lot of Jesus? Well, why not? With him, the odds are always in our favor. With him, there is always the guarantee that our problems will be solved. Most of them have already been solved by Jesus. With Jesus, there's no worry as to whether or not what happens in the future will be for our good. He promises that it will be for our good. With Jesus, there is true contentment, true peace. There's the assurance that our Heavenly Father, who gave up his Son for us, as Paul says, he will graciously give us all the things that we could ever need in this life. So, brothers and sisters in Christ, keep on asking a lot of Jesus. Because you know through his word and by the power of his miracles that he will always 
deliver. God's richest blessings, as you study his word, as you get to know Jesus better, you see his power and his miracles, you see his love for you, as he will always provide for you. And he will do more than you could ever ask or imagine. God's richest blessings, as you know him better and enjoy that love he has for you. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses our human understanding to, to know our Lord and Savior Jesus even better, all oh, the wretches and the blessings that will come from knowing of that love and that mercy and that grace of Christ. Amen. <laughs>